Hi everyone and thanks for joining us for our first Couch to College session. We're so glad you can make it. I'll shortly pass you over to Lisa O'Loughlin, who is the principal for the Manchester College, and she's going to talk to you about starting college this year. If you have any questions at any point, you can ask them in the live Q&A box, which is to the right of your screen. I'll now pass you over to Lisa to get the session started. OK, thank you, Amy, and welcome, everyone. Evening and welcome to the Manchester College. My name is Lisa Lachlan and I'm the principal of the college. And I'm here this evening, firstly, to introduce myself. So hello. And secondly, to begin our Couch to College programme, which is a series of webinars designed to support you in making your next steps to college and back to learning. The first thing to say is that obviously life has been a little different for everyone in year 11 this year. And that means that things, the things that normally happen at this time of the year, like your final term of learning, your exams and the usual end of term celebrations and introductions to your next steps won't have taken place in the same way. However, what does remain the same is that you will still be thinking about what's next and what it'll be like to start college in September. So whilst it won't be as easy to drop in and see us on campus, I wanted to reassure you that my, my team are still here to provide you with all the answers and support you need. And these sessions hopefully will help introduce you to us all. In this session tonight, I want to cover what you need to know over the next few weeks to help you get ready to start college in September. For example, GCSE results day, how you can be preparing for college and getting ready shortly after your GCSE results, and also what enrolment and induction will look like for us this year and when and how you'll hear from us as a college. Before we get into this, I, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the Manchester College. We've been working hard at the college over the last few years to ensure that our students get a really high quality experience and by the time they leave us, they haven't just completed a course but are ready to start a career. So I wanted to share a few, th a few of the things that make us different and mean that our students are absolutely career ready when they leave us at the end of their programme. Firstly, our results are excellent. Not only are we the number one college in GM for achievement, we're also the number one college in the country for functional English and maths. What does that mean for you? Well, that means that more of our students than any other FE college in GM get their technical qualification, they achieve it successfully at the end of their programme. And more of our students than any other college in England achieve their functional English and maths qualification. But as I said, it's not just about qualifications for us. When you join our college, you will either join one of our centres of excellence, where you'll have a two week work placement with an employer and lots of industry speakers and specialist support, or if you've already had some experience of the world of work, you will be able to apply to our Industry Excellence Academy, where the programmes are co-designed, co-delivered and co-branded by one of our specialist employer partners. Our Industry Excellence Academy courses also have at least 315 hours of industry experience built in. So by the time you leave us, you'll know a lot about your chosen industry. And even more importantly, you'll know some excellent employers and they'll also know you. Wherever our students start their journey with us, the benefits are clear. More of our learners successfully achieve their course, including English and Math, and our employers tell us that nine out of 10 of our students are ready for the workplace. We need to help you now to get ready, I suppose. So to help you get ready to make the next, important next step to either that Industry Excellence Academy or a Centre of Excellence, I want to share with you some of the things that you'll need to know in the next few weeks. So your GCSEs have obviously been quite different this year. You'll have completed coursework and in-class assessments and your tutors will have made a judgment about your grade. All of this information by now has been sent to an awarding organisation on your behalf and this will allow them to award your GCSE grades as normal. Your school will also be arranging for you to receive your results and as usual we'll be using them to decide which of our programmes is right for you. In many ways 
from here on, not much has changed about how your GCSEs help us to discuss with you which is the right next step for you. Still, there are a few things you need to know to get ready for the big day. I suppose first and foremost and most important is it's only seven weeks away. So you need to start to prepare for what you need to do next. On results day, our teams will be offering support in schools across GM as usual. So if you want to speak to one of them, you can see them there or contact us at our usual address. If you've applied to us already, your place is safe and you'll hear from us shortly about how to enrol. But if you haven't, don't worry, you've still got time. We know that not everyone will apply straight away and some of you may have been waiting to understand more about what college life might be like next year. If you haven't applied yet and you want to be sure of getting a place on the course, then make sure you register for our Making a College Application session as part of these events on Tuesday the 7th and Tuesday the 21st of July. It's, that's just one of the up and coming events as part of our Coach to College um, programme. Whether you've applied or not, we know that it may be some time since you were last in school or spoke to one of your teachers. That's why we've recently launched our Connect to College programme help you start to get us to know a little bit more about, uh, about how to prepare and get ready for one of our Industry Excellence Academies or our Centre of Excellence. We're also working with lots of schools to deliver remote subject specific masterclasses and subject related activities and competitions. Hopefully by accessing one of these activities you should have everything you need to know to get back in training for full time study. All the details are available either on our social media pages or on our Couch to College website. Once you get your results and have started to prepare, the next stage with us will be enrolment and induction. We've been working hard to ensure that enrolment and the start of your course is as safe as possible. To do this, we've made some changes to the way we'll be working next year. This means that your timetable will look slightly different to previous years and you will have a mix of face-to-face -face and online learning. Similarly, our enrolment process will begin online and can be accessed via our online portal. With lots of support available for you and you can find out more by registering for our Meet Our Team transition event on Friday the 10th of July. Before enrolment, there are lots of other ways to find out more about, our, about uh, our college. Our school liaison team are in constant contact with your school and will be contacting all of our new applicants at the start of August. So if you haven't already made an application, it's important you do so that you can be sure to re receive all of our updates. We can't wait to see you in September but I know you'll be thinking about some of the practical things you need to get to do to get back to college. Travel is now much easier because of our path, which means that bus travel is free for all 16 to 18 year olds in Greater Manchester, as long as you apply for an hour pass. I'm sure you're also thinking about how to stay safe when you come to college and during your time with us throughout the first term. We do have a dedicated Couch to College session to answer your safety questions and this takes place on Wednesday the 8th of July. So if you do want to find out more, please register to hear from our team. We're all here through the next few weeks to answer all of your questions and make your journey from Couch to College as easy as possible. So if you're starting your career at one of our centres of excellence or in our prestigious Industry Excellence Academy, I really look forward to seeing you really soon. I think that's all from me in terms of the information I want to share with you directly tonight. But there is now an opportunity for you to ask questions. So Amy, I think it's time we can switch over to questions and I'll answer anything that you need me to explain. Thank you, Lisa. That was a brilliant session. Thank you so much. Very informative. I hope everybody really enjoyed that. Um, there are some questions that we've got for you. So the first question for Lisa is what will happen if I don't get the GCSE results that I hope for? OK, well, often we find that um, some students will experience that. Some students will have 
expected a certain set of results and we'll be thinking what happens next and I'm not going to get a place at college. Well actually we are a general further education college so we do have courses at all different levels for you. Your GCSE results are important because they do help signal to us the level of study that you are ready to undertake. But even if you don't get the GCSEs you were expected, we will still have a course for you. So what you must do is get in touch with us in the usual way. If you've already made an application to us, we'll be in touch with you about enrolment. Engage in our enrolment process and we'll redirect you to a course that is more appropriate to your GCSE results. If you haven't applied to us, then make that application now and that means you're already in the process and we can have that conversation when your GCSE results come through. That's lovely, thank you. That um, There was somebody else actually asked that they hadn't applied yet and was it too late, but I think you've answered that that question in, in that statement there, which is great. Um, somebody else has asked um, that they have, they've changed their mind about the course that they want to do. Is it too late for them to change to change it? No, I think it's important to say that some of our courses are getting pretty full. So if you want to change or you want to make an application to a course, I'd urge you to do it as soon as possible. But it's never too late. We'll always work with you to try and find the best programme of study for you. Um, not everybody will make the right uh, choice at this stage and a little bit further down the line. Once you join us, people still do want to change their programme of study once they understand what's involved and we always try to make that possible for you. So what I would say is if you can make your choice now, make your application now. If you feel that you have made the wrong decision, tell us as soon as possible and that gives us the best opportunity to making that switch for you. But if not, don't worry, we will do our absolute best to accommodate you, even if it is a little bit further down the line. That's great, thank you. Um, somebody else has asked, can you tell me um, any more about the um, Industry Excellence Academy? Yeah, the Industry Excellence Academy um, is our really prestigious academy, which uh, enables students to get a really long um, and meaningful engagement with an employer in the sector of their choice. So we've been working on this academy for a number of years already. And we've been building our relationships with our employers. In the last year, over a thousand employers uh, joined our Industry Excellence Academy. And what they're doing with us is actually writing the qualifications with us. They're selecting the modules that they know is important to their workplace and their industry. And they're ensuring that those qualifications absolutely get our students ready for the world of work. They're also making a really serious commitment to delivering some of the qualifications. What that means for our students or for you is that you will see those employers and get to know them through the life of your studies. They're also making a significant commitment to a, a work experience and that's an experience off site, off campus, in their, in their business or in the world of work. Some of our employers are actually working collaboratively, so there may be two or three employers working together to ensure that our students can experience different workplaces within their sector. The main thing about the Industry Excellence Academy is that when you, you complete your programme, you will absolutely have gained a whole range of experiences in your chosen sector in that industry and you'll really know employers well. Many of our students found that when they've undertaken that long and extended placement, that actually some of those employers do offer them jobs at the end of the programme. So we know that we've given you the best run, uh, the best possible start in making, uh, achieving that first rung on the ladder to, to your career progression. Hope that answers then. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I'm sure it has. Um, somebody else has asked, what advice would you give um, for a parent on helping the children sort of getting back to, to college? OK, probably start by getting them out of bed, which is probably not <laughs> going to be a That'll be a start. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the most important thing is to keep up to date with, with our um, 
notifications. So keep having a look at our social media, keep having a look at our website, and we'll help you through the next few weeks and months. We'll help you take all those steps that you need to go through um, and your son or daughter or, or the, the young person in your care needs to go through. So we'll, we'll keep indicating to you what you need to do at each stage, each step of the way. I think most importantly is GCSE results day. So make sure that your son or daughter is, first of all, got their application in. That's really important. Then is attending GCSE results day so they know how well they've done and what, what they've actually achieved. And then we'll start to contact them and we'll start to notify them of different kind of sessions that they need to attend with us to share that information back with us so we can make that choice about which course is most appropriate. So make an application first because then you're in the process, you'll receive all of the alerts. If you're not ready to make an application yet, then keep alive on our website and on our social media and you'll see some of those alerts coming through. And then just respond to them and we'll help you. We'll, we'll take all of the pain out of it for you from there. That's great, thank you. There's um, a couple of questions actually about the GCSE um, results. So people are asking sort of, will it be um, on the usual day? The GCSE results will take place on the same day as usual and that you'll be notified by your, your teachers of the, the exact day. It does change each year, so the, the GCSE results will be notified, uh, the day will be notified to you by your tutors. Um, and it will run pretty much as normal. What, what might not happen is you might not be able to go out and celebrate in the same way uh, with your friends, but some of you possibly will <laughs> still choose to do that. Um, and things should run fairly smoothly for you from there. In terms of our processes, what we can't do at the moment or we don't want to do is have every single school leaver coming onto one site without managing that process. So our plan is to manage enrolment through some online processes and some face to face processes. So it'll be much more managed. You won't just be able to drop in in the way that you have done uh, in the past or the, or the way that students have done in the past. But we'll certainly talk you through that step by step and make sure you have all the information you need in order to be able to um, engage with that process. That's great. Thank you, Lisa. Um, got somebody else who's asked, um, my son wants to come to college, but he's not sure what he wants to do. Um, is there anybody that he can speak to about and, and advise him any further? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have all of the usual support that you'd be able to access normally by dropping into one of our campuses is still available online. So. We currently have careers advice, advisors working normal hours, their normal hours of business, they're still working. So you can get in touch with us and our transition team will support you. As I've already said, we've got an event coming up as part of Coach to College where they'll introduce themselves to you and you can start to talk to them about all of the different options that are available, um, the different subjects that we have, and they'll be able to talk to you about the differences between those subjects and really try to help you find the right course for you. That's lovely, thank you. There's a, a couple more sort of um, GCSE sort of um, questions here. Um, will somebody um, from the Manchester College be around on the GCSE results day if I didn't get the results that I, I wanted and I needed? Um, can we call somebody or do we, do we drop into the college or do we not know sort of the plans yet? All of our advice teams will be available on GCSE Results Day. We're not planning to open every campus on GCSE Results Day, and that's largely because our staff will be out in schools, so they're more likely to actually be on your school campus. However, we will have teams in support back in our campuses as well. So you can call the college and we'll put somebody in touch with you and we'll make an appointment for you to see that to, for you to either have, have a phone call or to see them face to face uh, a, a day or so later. So we will still be contacting you in the normal way. You'll still be able to see somebody face to face if that's the way that you want to do it. But actually on GCSE results day, the majority of our advice team are out in schools providing that advice in your school as you get the results. So 
try to get hold of one of them there. If not, contact us through the normal channels, through the, the normal lines, um, or on our or through our website, and we'll arrange a face to face or a telephone contact with you. That's lovely, thank you. And um, somebody has asked about the support that we offer for students with special needs. Yeah, so we have a specialist support team and we also have a complex transitioning team. So if um, a young person has particular learning needs or a, a specialist learning disability or difficulty, then we can help overcome that. So we, we have a, a whole range of specialist practitioners from uh, choose to work with students who are uh, who have autism um, to sensory impairment and a whole range of different things that we can support you with. So again, same process, make the application. On the application uh, form, you can see that there is um, a, a kind of opportunity for you to describe a learning difficulty or disability if you're not already known to our complex transitioning team. If you put that on the form, then that will tag to our transitioning team and they will be in touch with you so we can make specialist arrangements. First of all, for you to have a conversation with us, find out how your needs are going to be met. And then secondly, about what enrolment means for you and how we can take you through that process. That's great, thank you. Um, I've got a, a question here about um, what, will there be any special measures in place due to COVID? A couple of people asking that. That. <laughs> that's that question. We've got teams working 24 hours on this. So yes, there will be special measures in place um, for COVID. Clearly, it's difficult to say exactly what they will be just at this moment in time, because the government advice is changing and the situation is changing on a daily and weekly basis. We're planning and working on the assumption at this moment in time that we will be enforcing two metre distance, like social distancing on all our campus. There are a lot of different ways to reopen education settings. We could create social bubbles um, and clustering bubbles. We could move to um, isolating certain activities on certain campuses. But in order to be able to provide a whole programme of study, which means that you will get your technical experience and qualification, the theory classes that underpin your technical qualification, that you're able to access English and math and able to access enrichment and work experience. At this moment in time, we feel that the best option for us is to work to two metres social distancing. That means that we don't have to restrict your movement and that apart from maintaining those, that social distancing, we can move you between specialist technical spaces and into theory and English and math spaces. So we think that that provides the best opportunity to create the most meaningful programme of study for you. So that's likely to apply when you first face with us on campus. In addition to that, we are anticipating that some of the study programmes will be delivered online. And that is likely to be in a similar way to you see me now. So, we are setting up um, a platform so that we can have Teams delivery and Zoom delivery um, so we can still maintain face-to-face -face contact but by our electronic platform. In addition to that, we'll also be providing some activity on Moodle which is our, our learning platform. And what we're planning is that all students will have an induction that provides them with the skills to be able to really it, to engage well and meaningfully with some aspects of independent learning. Our plan though is that the majority of your study programme hours will either be delivered on campus or like you're talking to me tonight um, by a team. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Um, and actually somebody, uh, a couple of people have asked about um, you know, will their course be taught remotely? I know you just mentioned about, you know, some some studies will be done via uh, Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Um, do we? I mean, this person hasn't mentioned which course they're on, but you will. Do we? Do we know which courses will be doing that, or will it just be a mixture of, of courses depending on the subject area? Most most courses will have some elements of face to face, 
and we're working very hard to maximise the amount of face-to-face -face learning all of our learners get. So we're working through timetable and as we speak to make sure that all of our 16 to 18 learners and our adult learners get as much possible face-to-face -face contact. Um, in addition to that though, because we are operating or planning to operate two metre social distance, there will be some elements we need to deliver online. So almost every course will have some element of online learning. Um, but as I said, all your programme of study that you would have normally had face to face on campus will be delivered either through face to face learning on campus or, or through face to face via Teams. So there will be some levels of independent study, some of which you would have been able to do in learn centres on campus. And we'll still be able to accommodate some of that, but some of it will move to um, our, our Moodle side. But we'll give you all the tools you need to be able to access that and to be able to think about the best way you can interact with independent learning. That's great. Thank you, Lisa. And um, somebody has asked about work experience and they just said, how will work experience happen under this pandemic? It's, it, that's a really difficult, it's a great question, but a really difficult one to answer because it really depends on the subject that you are studying. So some of our subjects, um, uh, our employers are quite happy to have our students on site. All of those activities will be risk assessed in the normal way and we've got extensive risk assessments covering every possible activity on site. Those also extend to the workplace and we, we've got learners currently out on work experience um, in industry settings as we speak. So we know that our employers are still happy to accommodate them on site and we've got all of the risk covered and mitigated and the risk assessments are in place. For some industries, it's going to be slightly more difficult. Um, for example, at the moment, hairdressing. Hairdressers have just reopened and obviously we, there are limited numbers of people that can actually be on site. So we're currently working through our employers to look at how they can maximise as much possible on site or face to face learning. But where it's absolutely not possible, the experience will still take place via online platform. Thank you, Lisa. OK, just uh, checking the uh, the question feed. Yeah. I think everybody's everyone's question that everyone's gone a bit shy now. <laughs> um, I think um, yeah. I mean we've got we've got lots of um, obviously events planned over the next sort of three weeks. Um, with, our, with our Couch to College events, haven't we? Um, so I, I didn't know whether or not you wanted to talk about any anything that, that's coming up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are, there are a number of sessions coming up over the next few weeks. We've got our Vice Principal, our Vice Principal rather, uh, Christine Kenyon, who will be able to talk to you a lot more about Industry Excellence Academy and work experience. She's been all doing all of the detailed planning um, to make uh, as much of the activities we would usually have face to face possible um, and so she'll be able to answer that for you. Um, my other Deputy Principal Rachel Curry will be delivering a session about safety. Rachel has been doing all of the work thinking about social distancing and how we manage our, our campus and we have of course had uh, campus open in the last few weeks so we've already tested our processes, we've already tested our ways of working. Everybody's remained safe, we haven't had any outbreaks. It's all, it's all run very, very smoothly. Um, and Rachel's been doing all of that detailed planning, she's been doing all the risk assessments, etc. And she can talk you through what that means for you. So for example, what we know is that um, masks need to be worn by law now on public transport in, in England. And so she'll be able to talk to you about, do you still need to wear a mask in college? Well, the answer will be no, you don't. But what does that mean for when you, for you when you come off public transport or the bus or the train or whatever, and you come into college? How do you dispose of that safely? We've got all of that. It's all very, very boring stuff, but we've got it all worked out. So 
that we know that we can keep you as safe as possible whilst on site. And I really would encourage young people or parents who are a little bit worried about a little bit anxious about it to drop into that session because I'm sure that Rachel will completely reassure you. In addition, we've got our transition team um, and they are really the experts in advising you about all kinds of things from um, your, your, what career you want to take, so which choice to make, which application to put in. But equally, they can also advise you on things like how do I uh, apply for an hour pass? How do I get other financial support? And there's a lot, all of that support is still in place. We're actually still providing financial support to some of our students that will be with us again next year through the summer as well. So we've not stopped doing that through the summer because we know these are challenging times for everybody. And they will be able to help you with that and, and help you understand how to apply and how to get the support you need. There's lots of different activities. I would also encourage um, you to go online and have a look at our Connect to College programme. So that's a little bit different. It's a bit confusing. Couch to College and Connect to College. But our <laughs> Connect to College program is a whole set of activities, not just webinars like this, but activities like competitions, online work that you can do. And there are some activities also going on through schools where we're at, we've got experts, some of our employers, our fantastic employers who support our Industry Excellence Academy are doing specialist lectures and specialist sessions as well. So there's a whole range of things that you can be looking at in order to get ready. And I think, I, I know it's been a really, really strange time. And what I've said to the majority of parents who, who've asked me, a bit like being a doctor, being a principal, people ask you all the questions about the young person <laughs> and the transition to college. Um, everyone's been asking me, should I get my, my uh, son, my daughter out of bed? Do they need to get out of bed every morning to get them ready for college? <laughs> and what I always answer is, um, no 16 to 18 year old has ever been uh, too badly damaged by having a few weeks of relaxation through the summer before college. I can hear most parents groaning now as I say that. I don't think anything really terrible is going to happen by you um, having a little bit of break and a little bit of a rest. But what I would say is that seven weeks will pass really, really quickly and GCSE results um, will be upon us before we know it. So use your time wisely. OK, stay in bed in the morning if that's what you want to do. But yeah, give over an hour a day or every few days to having a look at those things that are really important, like how am I going to access public transport? What financial support can I get in place? Make sure you've made your application. Make sure that you're in that process so that you're getting all of our alerts and updates. And if it has been a little bit, a little while since you've done any real college work and you've kind of got out of the habit, then connect to college is perfect because it will re-engage you and get you back into a way of working. That's that great. Helps. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Lisa. Um, I've got um, somebody's asking, what will a typical day be like in September? I know you sort of mentioned about all the, you know, the social distancing and and sort of what the college will look like. What what do you think a typical day could possibly look like to to one of the students? Okay. So our plan is to try and make your typical day as normal as possible, but there are some things that will have to change. So we are planning things like staggered start times so that we can make sure that you enter college and leave college as safely as possible. We will be making um, hand washing and hand cleansing facilities available at the entrances to all of our sites and our teams will be there as well to support that to remind you of what you need to do as you come into site, um, to remove your TPE, to dispose of it safely and to wash your hands and make sure that hygiene is of a really high standard so there's no risk of transmitting infection. You'll then be off to your classroom and in classrooms there will be fewer people in classrooms than there normally are but you'll still have a, a, a really good social group and sometimes you will be accessing that classroom by a team. So some people might be in the classroom physically, you might be on team and vice versa and, and it, it will work like that. Some of the things that will be slightly different is the social spaces. So we're having to adapt our social spaces 
to remind all of our students that that two metre social distancing is really, really important. So things like um, food in our canteens, we usually have some quite big queues in a very, very kind of busy canteen environment. We're thinking about how we might adapt that. Food will still be available for our students, but we're thinking about things like grab and go services. So that will be slightly different. It won't exactly be the same experience as we've had in previous years, but we'll make sure that all of, the, all of our student needs are still accommodated. So there will be food available. It will just operate slightly differently. In terms of classroom activities, we're issuing guidance to all of our teachers at the moment on how to safely manage classroom and practical workshop environments. And again, we're hopeful that the majority of your activities will make as normal as possible, but it is likely that it will reflect how, your, how the industry you've chosen to work in is currently working. So for example, um, I went to have my hair done yesterday, believe it or not, um, and um, all of the hairdressers were wearing um, visors. And it's likely that we'll introduce as we move into September and through that first term, those, those practices that are um, being put into place within the industry that you will work. So yeah, the world will be slightly different. College will be, every college will be slightly different. But what we're trying to do is make um, your programme of study as normal an experience as possible and try to ensure that you get the best possible um, engagement either face to in a classroom or in a workshop setting. We're looking to maximise that as much as possible. But there will be some differences, there's no doubt about that. Thank you, Lisa, that's great. Um, somebody else has, has asked, will they, um, can they enrol at their local campus? Um, or are there, are there, I know you, you've mentioned that there were certain campuses that, that would be that would be open. Yeah, so some of our some of our campus will be open, but our first engagement will enrolment will be online. So um, our, our enrolment process will begin online. So that's the first step. And then there are some aspects of that enrolment process that will probably need you to come into campus for, or we would want you to come into campus for, so you can meet people, meet the team. But it needs to be a more managed way of doing things, so we can't, you can't just drop in. What I would say is, rather than just dropping in, I would see our online platforms, our social media, and or our website as a way of dropping in. It's dropping in, but you know, um, from a from a distance. Yeah. Um, so any of the questions you would normally drop in to ask or the things that you would want to share with us, you can still do via all those platforms. So we'll start that enrolment process. We'll get in touch with you once you've made the application. You'll get a slot to complete your online enrolment and you'll get all of the guidance you need to be able to do that. And then very slowly we'll start to introduce um, students to campus. But we need to do it in a managed way and I hope everybody appreciates that that's the way we will need to work um, as we move forward. I'm sure they will. There's, we do have some, um, for the person who's asking about enrolment, we do have um, uh, an enrolment session later on this week and we've got four sessions over the next um, three weeks as well. So if you go to uh, the TMC website, you'll be able to um, book on to go onto Couch to College and you'll be able to book on to your session there. Um, that's absolutely brilliant, Lisa. The um, I think everyone's I think now, now everyone really has gone shy now. <laughs> but um, <laughs> thank you so much for um, for answering all of those questions and for for informing everybody what the the next step to to college will be like in September. Not at all, um, to, to thank all all prospective students and all parents that have joined us this evening. Um, what people know about me is I'm always out and about around the campus and that is not likely to change. So I look forward to seeing parents um, as we move through the, the coming terms. We will have parents evenings on site. And I also, more than anything, look forward to seeing our students in September. So good luck with the GCSEs. Make sure your application's in and you'll be seeing us very soon. Take care in the meantime.
Thank you, Lisa. And just a, a very quick reminder that we've got lots of sessions happening over the next three weeks. Um, so as you know, to how to enrol, careers and welfare, making your college application. And also next week, we've got lots of the um, subject areas doing um, demonstrations. Uh, we've got um, Simon Wood, who's going to be on the um, hospitality and catering session next week. Um, and then we also have a student experience um, and information week in the, the third week. So we really hope that you'll join us. If you go onto the TMC website um, and you go onto Couch for College, you'll be able to find a full timetable there of sessions that you can join. Thank you again. Thank you, Lisa. And I'll see you all soon. Thanks.